Okay, well, I have no idea if what I'm about to say is what Mark expected when he invited me. I saw the summer and it had lots of exciting things about smart buildings and, you know, 5,000 students and it was going to be great. If he was expecting me to come and tell you, yeah, you're interested in smart buildings, and I've got a smart building and it's brilliant and this is what you should do, that, that's really not what I'm about to say at all. Um, instead, what I can tell you is some of my experiences with four years of trying to do real-world smart buildings and some of the real-world problems that get involved in that. Um, hopefully that will be useful and hopefully that will be a useful discussion point. Maybe some of the following talks will solve the wonderful problems I've got. Maybe it will prompt some of you to think about what we're doing. Uh, one thing I can tell you, we have had some wonderful successes with this building. I mean, you're all here and you're all in the building and you've seen the Siemens Mindsphere and you've had some free beer. That's not really what the building was built for. The building was built to teach practical engineering. Um, that really was a revolutionary idea. A lot of you are probably from technology backgrounds. It's kind of obvious that I give a computer science lecture on Tuesday and then on Thursday I get everyone in front of a computer and they try it. And then next week I give them another lecture and then they try some more. And if you're kind of interested in computing and you want to try something, you whip open a laptop and you try it, and that's great. However, if you're doing civil engineering or mechanical engineering, or these guys up here are doing chemical process engineering, let's just give that a go, it involves huge bits of equipment and massive amounts of space and huge amounts of resources. This building was built to let engineering students get that sort of practical education. So if you get a chance to look around upstairs, you'll see great big engineering labs where we can have 80 people all at the same time, throwing water around and learning something about fluid mechanics or cutting metal or whatever. That's all wonderful, and we can now do wonderful multidisciplinary teaching. Somewhere along the line, someone said, hey, there's a wonderful opportunity to make this a smart building, and we could teach people about smart buildings and have sensors and stuff, and it'd be great. I think after four years, it's fair to say there's still a wonderful opportunity to do that, and there's a great... And there's potential that we can do something useful, but the reality has been slightly more tricky. Um, the plan was, it's a great big building, it's got 3,000 sensors in it. I've got kind of 1,600 in this system over here, and there's 500 in that system over there, and there's probably some others in one of the other systems that I haven't got access to yet. Um, it, it's spread across multiple wired systems. This is not in any way beautifully uploaded to the cloud, and it's all available for machine learning. It's still kind of sitting, but there's, some of it is sitting on the computer on someone's desk down in the, the state department. It is being collected, um, bits of it are collected every five seconds and it's beautifully high resolution. Other bits are every 15 minutes because that's more than enough for civil engineers. What's your problem? It takes 15 minutes for a room to heat up, right? Okay, cool, whatever. Um, and we do have various data losses, particularly on Wednesdays. Um, yeah, on, on Wednesdays it tries to get the low resolution stuff and it spends too much time doing that so it doesn't get the high resolution. Yeah. Reality is a bit difficult. Luckily, I'm now being allowed to kind of improve on some of this, so I have a lad who's building some wonderful distributed computing stuff that's going to make this much better, but we're getting there. Very much the vision was, oh, let's have a smart building, it'd be brilliant. That crashed into the reality of the building industry. Um, and the building industry is not evil. And I was told to emphasize that this is a joke. This is not what actually happened. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. Um, but yeah, pretty much the building industry has subcontractors, and they have subcontractors, and they have subcontractors, and eventually you've got a guy whose job it is to pull cables, and he's told, we need loads of sensors. So he pulls a lot of cables and puts in a lot of sensors. And that's great, but a lot of the technology they're using was just the standard building management system technology that they've always used. And that was really never designed to capture this volume of data at this rate, etc. There are some really fascinating weird problems in the building where just the subcontractor, subcontractor, subcontractor have got given a spec to put a sensor two meters above the floor in the atrium. How do you put a sensor two meters above the floor in the atrium? Being an electrician, he's got a bunch of aluminium electricians ducting, so there's some two meter bits of aluminium electricians ducting around the place. Yeah. They solved the problems, but they solved the problems with what they had on hand, not necessarily what we sitting in a wonderful IoT meetup would have liked them to do. Uh, the university was not entirely sort of flawless in this. The, the State Department likes its tried and trusted systems. We've got 400 buildings to manage. If we put in some really cool, swanky new thing that no one knew how to operate, we wouldn't be able to do all of that exciting teaching upstairs because we'd be too busy fixing brand new bits of technology. So this wasn't evil, but this is the way it goes. And as I say, uh, although if we're going to sit here in a room full of people with exciting IoT ideas for smart buildings, it's worth remembering we do have to actually engage with the building industry. And the building industry works the way it does for lots of perfectly good reasons. They aren't evil and stupid. They certainly aren't a bunch of people that have never thought about this. We can't turn up and go, well, we've got this wonderful agile design methodology. You should have done that. And they'll go, my goodness, no one ever said it. 
the building industry has much longer time scales, and that's for a reason. Things have to be planned in advance. Interestingly, when I worked in safety critical software, we still had to have long time scales. You still had to plan things in advance. I was still using 15-year-old outdated technology because it was tried and tested and we knew it would work. Um, my preferred anecdote for this building is up on the third floor is the Fluid Mechanics Lab. It's got a huge flume that sloshes somewhere between two and ten tons of water around. They had to know about that before they dug the foundations. You couldn't get three quarters of the way up this building and decide, I'm going to pivot and suddenly have a huge flume up there. The building industry needs long times and planning and structure and tried and tested systems. Where we're going to do our smart cities, we want to make sure we're working with that. We can't randomly decide, oh, I'm going to just bring in this new thing. That's something worth bringing into mind as we go on. However, that doesn't mean it's all evil. Um, there's plenty of cynicism to go around. We could happily have them come here and tell us, well, you lot don't really tell us what IoT was anyway. You know, who is there to say that what they did wasn't IoT? Um, when we think about IoT, perhaps we think of little wireless sensors, and we think about, you know, low energy things, and we think about things being darted all over the place. Does it have to mean that? Does it matter? This is a... It's a bit unfair to say this is 90s technology. I think this was designed in early 2000 and something. But, you know, we've got a whole bunch of these control boxes, and they've got wires coming out of them, and the wires run from the control room up and through the ceiling, down through that plaster, and into that box in the back there, and they measure things in this room. Is that IoT? Is it not IoT? Does it really matter whether it's IoT? Hopefully, at some point today, you're going to tell me lots of useful things I can do once I've collected all of this data. Does it matter that I didn't get it wirelessly? Does it matter that I got it through some old technology. Mm. A lot of the lessons we can learn from IoT, we can still apply, even if we're using old technology to do some of the mechanical bits. Handling that sort of volume of data is an interesting problem, wherever it comes from. <coughs> One of the places where all of the cute, kind of standard IoT things really comes in, though, is retrofitting. I've now had this building operating for four years, and I go, oh, we wish that thing was over there. I could go and grab that thing on the back wall and pull really hard, and the cable would come out with half the plaster, and a lot of people would be very angry with me. Um, but I could move it around. If we have other bits of our estate, like the beautiful <coughs> listed Firth Court, I definitely can't start drilling holes in walls and running cables <coughs> everywhere. The ability to have kind of wireless, small, low power things gives us the chance to put our high technology new ideas into old bits of building fabric that we can do a lot less stuff with. It also removes a lot of the contractor's constraints. Like I say, the guy that had to use massive aluminium ducting to get something two meters off the ground, I mean, okay, wireless wouldn't help with that, but there's various other things in this building where the plan said there should be a sensor on this wall. There isn't a sensor on this wall, and I guarantee it's because the guy could not figure out how to get a cable to that bit of wall. Yeah, if we can solve some of those problems, we can allow some of the things to happen that currently are constrained by a lot of the industry's kind of reasonable practices and limitations. <clears throat> the other thing I'm quite keen to talk about is IoT for control. Um, whenever I've dealt with smart building stuff, you tend to start reading about it and realize it's just more data collection. We can collect more data, we can put more sensors, we can collect more data, we can put more sensors, we can do some analytics, we can collect more data, we can put more sensors. Lots of people and the students in the room will uh, vouch for this, come into this building and go, it's not very smart, it's way too hot in computer and four. It really is. Yeah, uh, and I've got lots of data to perform that but I can't do very much about it. Uh, I'm quite interested to see some more IoT technologies for actually inserting control into things that already exist. I mean, this is, you know, some guys like Arduino and a relay, but actually, <coughs> instead of sticking yet another sensor in the room, wouldn't it be nice to stick yet another controller into a room somewhere? A bit more kind of stuff about making cities responsive might be really interesting. Again, we tend to talk about smart and we just mean more data. What we push down is arguably as important as what we pull up and obviously creates lots of security problems, but is still perhaps the interesting bit. <coughs> this, however, is the slide that I'm most kind of antsy and excited or upset about. Um, we have huge numbers of sensors. Whether we have the many we should do, we have thousands of sensors. <coughs> what we don't have is brilliant metadata to tell me about them. I have got a database with several thousand sensors, and it has you know, several million, probably billion rows by now in it. I can tell you all about what's going on with sensor VMS L12037 S2. No one turns up in my office asking me about sensor VMS L12037 S2. Everyone comes and says, yeah, that computer room's too hot. My problem then is, okay, great, which of the sensors is in that computer room? 
I have a whole series of PDF diagrams, and I can scroll around to that computer room, and I can read some data off the PDF diagram, and then I can go and look in another CSV file somewhere that links that to something else. And then I, very little of this is stored electronically. <coughs> so, I mean, it's a PDF, but that's not usefully electronically. Uh, we have lots of specialists to do deep learning and machine learning and data processing. None of those people can do anything if all you give them is raw data and no context to it. I can learn fascinating trends about a bunch of data points. It tells me nothing about the building if I can't relate it to the physical spaces. Metadata is the bit that really, really was missing in this entire project. <clears throat> and of course, if you are going to do IoT things where we retrofit things, or they're wireless, or they can be moved around, or they can be dropped in and out at random, or we don't have to put them there, then we really, really need some metadata. Um, yeah, being able to put 17 <laughs> sensors in a room is useless if you don't remember which room it was. Putting 17 sensors in a room and then one of them gets moved is useless. Putting 17 sensors in a room and two of them disagree, also useless. Metadata is the bit that I'm deeply missing <coughs> from this project. I can write a program to, to you know, import my gigabytes of data and do Gaussian processes or whatever else you want to do to it. It's meaningless, but I don't know what it relates to. My life is spent poring over these PDF diagrams to manually decide which things relate to what. Um, like I say, this isn't a story that has a happy ending and that concludes with, of course, what you should all be doing is this. This, this is a bunch of open questions, having tried this for four years. Um, but nonetheless, hopefully some questions that some of you can answer, and hopefully some questions that some of you can you know, help me with in just this afternoon. But as I say, if we're just sitting here going, smart cities means getting more data, we're, we're not doing this right. We're not making smart cities. We're making instrumented cities, which is cool and all, but isn't really what we want. Um, I don't know if any questions. Thank you. <laughs> right.